over the age of our dog, um, teaching a positive interrupter or an attention noise can be a really good way to handle stressful situations. Um, for example, we could use it when your dog is um, chewing up your furniture. We could use it when your dog is nipping uh, a member of your household. Essentially, we are going to use a, a word or a noise that your dog is going to associate with food to get them to stop doing something. We are literally using this to get their attention. So we are going to literally be teaching them when they hear this word or they hear this noise that they are going to get some treats. And this means we can use it as a non-confrontational way to get them away from something else that might be going on. So yes, it's very good at eye contact. So what we can do is start by thinking of a word. Um, it could be puppy. It could be hey. It could be a noise like or Essentially, this noise is going to be to get your dog to turn and face you when they are doing something you would rather they weren't. So, for the sake of this, I am going to use um, as my noise. So, I'm using like a clicking noise. So, every time I make that clicking noise, I want him to associate it with something good that will get his attention. So, I'm using treats. So, I'm going to say, make that noise, give him a treat. Make that noise give him a treat. And I'm going to do this loads of times. I'm just letting him know that when he hears this, good things happen. And you can see he's starting to lift his head when I make that noise. I don't think I've ever used this noise with him for anything. Um, so it is sort of brand new for him. He gets a treat. Um, and we do this a lot. And if we've got a dog who's a bit bored, we can throw one away every now and then. Good boy. And then we can do that again. And we're going to do this at least 15, 20 times. But then what we want to do with it is use it to get their attention. So I'm going to throw that treat this time. And then when his head is up, oh, good boy. And he came over. So he got some praise and he got a treat. So now I'm using that noise to get his attention. So I might throw that treat away and then good boy, well done. You are so clever. Could do it closer. Good boy. All I want him to know is that that noise means good things. So when they've got the hang of it and you feel like you've made that association with the noise or the word, we can then start to use that to uh, positively interrupt behaviors that we're not happy with. So it might be they're nipping, it might be they're jumping. You don't want to constantly be saying, no, 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 stop it and getting mad because they, they don't really understand. They just know you're cross, but they don't understand what you'd rather they were doing. And it can just like upset some dogs who are particularly sensitive and it's just not really needed to like train them with any sort of intimidation. We can just interrupt them whether they're a puppy who's got the memory of a goldfish or they're an adult dog, we just want them away from something. And that something could be like a puppy in the house jumping up at someone. That could be a puppy chewing at your door frame. Or it could be you're out on a walk and your dog is trying to pull towards a tree and they're pulling. You could go get their attention back on you and treat them with you. Whatever noise or word you use, <coughs> it should be something you are comfortable using and that everyone in your household is also comfortable using. But teaching an attention noise or a positive interrupter can solve a huge amount of problems. The important part is that you reward them regularly, whether that is you are rewarding them with a treat for coming, you know, away from something else, or you start to reward them, you know, you've got a puppy, they've come towards you. Um, so we could, probably wouldn't work here for him, but we could then go, Oh, what a good boy! And he's been infinitely disappointed he didn't get the bit of chicken that I've got on me. There we go, good boy! He likes a bit of a fight, really. And then we can say, you know, like to your puppy, your puppy's chewing your door frame, you can get their attention, and then you can get them something that is appropriate, which could be a toy like this, it could be a, a chew, oh, goodness, he doesn't usually play like this, um, it could be anything, good boy, that you want it to be, that's not what they are doing. So you're giving them 
a better option. Don't just call them away from it, uh, what they're doing, especially if they're puppies and expect them to come straight off it um, and then never go back to it again. Make sure there is a better deal than what they were doing before. But God, I've never seen him play with this toy like this. Uh, <laughs> get it. Uh, it has to pay off when you make that noise. It should either be something that redirects them like a toy or it should be a treat. You can't just train it and not reward them though, eventually, you know, in the short term. In the long term, you probably can. Um, at the time of this video, um, Arkle is obviously feeling well because he won't play Tuggy unless he is. So, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> wasn't expecting this display. Um, <laughs> so, teach a positive interrupter. It's great for young dogs, it's great for adult dogs. Um, it's an easy way to interrupt something without being aversive or frightening or scary.